I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Vietnam Veterans News Podcast. News of interest about Vietnam veterans from a Vietnam veteran. Now, here's your host, Mac Payne. This is Mac Payne here with episode 1752 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. News about the Vietnam War and the brave veterans who served there, as told to you by yours truly, a Vietnam veteran. In this episode, I'm going to talk about books. Because I like books. I have written books and I have read books. And I highly encourage you to do the same thing, especially reading them. Writing books takes a little effort, but reading them is easy. You just pick up the book and read it. Since this is the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast, I generally talk about books related to the Vietnam War. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about another very, very interesting book. I have not read it yet, but I will soon. The title of the book I'm going to tell you about is Saigon at War. It was written by a professor out at the University of Southern Mississippi. Her name is Dr. Heather Sturr. She's a very accomplished individual in the field of education. She just happens to be a fellow in the University of Southern Mississippi's Dale Center, She is a recipient of the USM's prestigious General Buford Blunt Professorship in Military History and Nina Bell Suggs Professorship. This is not her first book. She also wrote a book titled Beyond Combat, Women and Gender in the Vietnam War Era, along with numerous articles. If you would like to know more about her work at the University of Southern Mississippi, There's a website that will take you right to her and all the information about her and her work there at the university. It is too long to even try to read to you on this podcast, but it will be on the show notes over at the podcast website, VietnamVeteranNews.com, episode 1752. Go over there and check it out. There will also be a link right next to the one about Dr. Stirr about the Dale Center for the Study of War and Society. If you'd like to study war, even though there's a song out there that declares, I ain't going to study war no more. Sometimes it's a good idea to study it, so hopefully we won't do it again. Learn from the past. There was a story on the University of Southern Mississippi's website titled, Stirs Saigon at War Employs Rare Take on U.S.-Vietnam Conflict. This story was submitted by none other than David Tisdale of the University of Southern Mississippi. I'm going to share his story with you that talks about Dr. Stir and her book. She is not only a well-versed educator right there in Southern Mississippi, but she went over to Vietnam and lived there for a while just to soak up the local society and environment to give her a better viewpoint for writing her book. That's another reason I'm adding her book, Saigon at War, to the Vietnam Veteran News podcast recommended reading list. There will also be a link on the show notes over at the podcast website, vietnamveteranews.com, where you can purchase a copy of this book. If you go the Kindle route, you can be reading it in about... 45 seconds after you buy it. Maybe not even that long. After you hear what David Tisdale has to say about the book, Saigon at War, I have a feeling you'll be clicking on that link and buying your copy so you can read it. It's a good one. Let's take a look at the story. Dateline, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. In her latest book, University of Southern Mississippi History Program Professor and Vietnam War Expert, Dr. Heather Sturr, that's spelled S-T-U-R, looks through an often ignored prism to more thoroughly understand the conflict that bedeviled both the U.S. and Vietnam through the 1960s and beyond. 
Saigon at War, South Vietnam and the Global 60s, Cambridge University Press, examines through the vantage point of the people of South Vietnam the intersection of politics in the South Vietnamese capital of Saigon, armed conflict with the communist North Vietnamese, and the fledgling democratic nation's case for legitimacy in the international court of public opinion. Saigon at War is one of the first books that takes South Vietnam and South Vietnamese political actors seriously in the broader context of the Vietnam War. Saigon at War is one of the first books that takes South Vietnam and South Vietnamese political actors seriously in the broader context of the Vietnam War, Dr. Stirr contends. Much of the previous scholarship emphasized American experiences and decision-making regarding the war and nation-building. I'm going to butt in here a little bit and ask the question if she referred to Max Boot's classic book titled The Road Not Taken, where he describes the exploits of Edward G. Lansdale in Vietnam because Lansdale was involved with all the main characters And he knew well what was going on over there. Matter of fact, Edward G. Lansdale is the one who set up the country of South Vietnam and its leader, No Diem Zim. Hopefully that book influenced her writing. Continuing. Historians who have examined Vietnamese perspectives have emphasized voices from Hanoi and the Southern Communist Movement, she said. These approaches to the Vietnam War have left out an important angle that reveals a diversity of opinions among South Vietnamese about what Vietnam's post-colonial future should look like. A communist victory was not inevitable, and Hanoi's Communist Party did not represent the views of all Vietnamese. That is a very, very true statement. Hundreds of thousands of people living in the northern area of the country got out of there as fast as they could when the communists took over. Because the communists, when they came in, they began to summarily murder all property owners and scholarly type people. They were not warm and friendly people. Continuing, Dr. Stir posits in Saigon at war that South Vietnam had a working democracy that failed because of political repression at the hands of South Vietnamese government regimes, not as a result of widespread commitment to communism among the Vietnamese population. I have to agree with that one, too. They had all sorts of problems there in the southern part of that country. But the South Vietnamese generally regardless of their political or religious beliefs, they hated communism. They still do. Continuing, as a nation that developed under the guidance of the U.S., South Vietnam offered its citizens a taste of liberty, only to snatch it away from them when free speech appeared too dangerous to government stability, she said. Harsher state and police crackdowns on opposition groups in the late 1960s radicalized some Catholics, students, and other activists, pushing them deeper into the camp that supported reconciliation and an end to the war, even if it gave control of Vietnam to the communist. It also stirred up the Buddhist. They got so stirred up, they began a program of self-emulation in the streets of Saigon. For all the people down in East Palmdale, Florida, that means they set themselves on fire. They were very upset. Continuing, Dr. Stir conducted much of the research for Saigon at War while as a Fulbright scholar in Vietnam in 2013 and 14. She learned Vietnamese while in graduate school and returned to language study in Vietnam, working in an immersive environment. Meaning she got in there and mixed it up with the natives. Her Vietnamese language research materials were housed in two archives in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. One was Vietnam's National Archives II and the General Sciences Library, which used to be the National Library of the Republic of Vietnam. While there, she analyzed South Vietnamese government and military documents, newspapers, magazines, police and court reports, provincial reports, political newsletters, intelligence reports, diplomatic cables, and letters from citizens to various government offices 
in the 1960s and 1970s. Back in the USA, she augmented her Vietnamese research with documents from the U.S. National Archives in College Park, Maryland, and none other than the Vietnam Archive at Texas Tech University. A great place. They put on a tremendous Vietnam program every year out there in Lubbock, Texas. I would encourage anyone interested in the Vietnam War to attend one of those conferences. I've been to two of them, and I have been blown away. They have people there from all over the world. Not only Vietnam, but they had speakers from Europe. One year, they had a speaker there from Poland talking about the Vietnam War. It's very interesting to get these different perspectives of the Vietnam War from people in different parts of the country. That's why I recommend you go to the conference. They didn't have one this year because of the COVID-1984 virus pandemic. Hopefully we'll be over it by next year. Although, back in 1968, when the Hong Kong flu came through and killed over 100,000 Americans, it came back again in 1969. Not nearly as bad, but it did return. So we never know. This COVID thing may come back again, too. Unfortunately, The Vietnam Conference out at Texas Tech University was a casualty of this year's version of the COVID-1984. Continuing, Dr. Stirr said an early inspiration for Saigon at War was her faculty colleague, Dr. Andy Weist's book, Vietnam's Forgotten Army, Heroism and Betrayal in the Arvin. A recipient of the Distinguished Book Award from the Society for Military History. That book is also on the recommended reading list of this podcast. There will be a link in the podcast show notes for that one, too. I recommend you get both of them if you're interested in learning more about Vietnam. I do recommend that you read Max Boot's book, The Road Not Taken, first. That book's like reading an encyclopedia on Vietnam in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Continuing. Andy was one of the first historians to approach the South Vietnamese military as a legitimate actor in the Vietnam War, and his book made me wonder what the Vietnam War story would look like if we expanded our understandings of South Vietnam further by incorporating political and civilian perspectives into the narrative, Dr. Stirr said. Again, I would recommend reading The Road Not Taken to pick up a lot of information about the civilian and political situation in Vietnam after the French were unceremoniously kicked out of the place. Continuing, Dr. Weiss said that while many write about the American involvement in the Vietnam War, few write about the Vietnamese aspect of what was, after all, their war. That's right. Racism was running rampant back then, and most people looked at the Vietnamese as just little small children that we didn't need to worry about. But they were a whole lot more than that. I'll tell you what. For my two years in Vietnam, I gained a high respect for the Vietnamese people. Continuing. Fewer still write about the South Vietnamese civilian population. And even fewer still write about that side of the war having conducted research on site in Saigon, Weist continued. So Dr. Stirr's book is something of a unicorn and will help fundamentally rewrite our historical understanding of the Vietnam War. Again, I recommend both of these individuals to take a look at Max Boot's book titled The Road Not Taken. That was David Tisdale's story about Dr. Heather Stirr's new book, Saigon at War. I highly recommend you read that. The more we know about Vietnam both the military and the civilian and the political and the religious side, the better we will be able to go into the future when we get faced with situations like we did in Iraq and Afghanistan. Let's hope that we will never again have to build a monument in Washington, D.C., made out of black marble with 58,276 names of Americans etched on its surface who gave their lives in a war for their country. We'd like to avoid those, and the more we know about the wars fought in the past will help us to avoid the wars in the future. That's what I'm hoping anyway. So why don't you take a look at both of these books? 
I think it would be very enlightening for you and help you understand the Vietnam War even more. That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. This is Mac Payne closing out episode 1752 of the Vietnam Better News Podcast. Thank you so much for coming to listen to these stories. You are cordially invited to return again soon and often to listen to more coming your way on this podcast, the Vietnam Veteran News. How about that? Ain't that a mess?